Good morning, class of 2021. You have made it to your college signing day. Give yourself a hand. Please remember, this day is about you. It's not about your neighbor. It's not about your friends. It's not about the people out on Facebook. This is about you. This is your opportunity to recognize that you have made a commitment to go to college. And we're going to watch you sign a certificate to say you're planning to do that very thing. So sit back and enjoy your day. I'd like to take a minute to introduce uh, the, uh, the lady who has pulled this together, Miss Lisa Green. She is our Muhlenberg Achieves Program Manager. She works for the Felix E. Martin Foundation. So at this time, if you would, please welcome to the, to the podium, Miss Lisa Green. Good morning, everybody. Uh, some of you I know really well, and some of you I haven't really had the opportunity uh, to spend a lot of time with. But I am super excited for each and every one of you just the same. Uh, this is a huge deal. I was one of those students when I was in high school that I knew um, that I wanted to go to college. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. I actually changed my major twice while I was in college. But when I was in school, we didn't have big celebration events like this. And I just feel like that it's imperative that you all understand the significance of any decision that you make post-secondary. Um, my program, Millenberg Achieves, that's what we do. We, um, we try to support and provide resources for every person that is interested in attending any kind of post-secondary endeavor whether that is joining the military, whether that is getting a career certification, or whether that is attending a two or four year college. We are proud to support any, any choice that you make as long as we see that you are willing to commit to taking that next step. And this day and age, it's actually almost impossible to get any kind of meaningful employment without taking some kind of post-secondary step. It's, like I said, whether that's for college or it's a career certification. So um, I applaud you, and on behalf of the foundation, I, we all applaud you for your commitment. So um, the event itself, just, just for a little background and what's to come, this event was developed in the concept of athletes having signing days. Uh, and the Kentucky Higher Education Authority, they realized that it's just as important for a senior who's committing to go to college to become a teacher or a lawyer to have the recognition as it is for an athlete who's going to be playing ball in college. And so they developed the idea of college decision day, college signing day. And so that's what today we all are gonna let you all have the experience of coming up as your college is called, you will come up onto the stage to be recognized. And we actually have signing certificates on each table. And so you will come up and you will have the opportunity to sign your certificate to commit to your college. And we will take your pictures out here. We will go outside, do a group photo. And then there's actually going to be in the multi-purpose area, like as well, we take you out for college. So don't, don't everybody get up and like come up all at once. Um, but we actually have photo booths set up back there, and we will take your college frame, and you all will be able to get pictures um, in the photo ops as well. We wanted to make sure that you all were celebrated as much as possible. And then, my favorite part, I did uh, go to J&H and get cupcakes for you guys to have. So when you go through the cafeteria for lunch today, there are um, chocolate and white cupcakes from J&H. There's plenty of cupcakes for all you guys. So, I mean, if it was me, that, was, that would be the part that I would probably be the most excited about. Uh, but anyway, I am now going to introduce to you all Mr. John Bergman. Many of you have had the opportunity to sit down and work with Mr. Bergman during um, a FAFSA workshop that we have held, or you've heard him speak already, but he is actually in Chicago today. He is going to join us via Zoom and he's just going to talk to you all real quick and then once he finishes uh, Mr. Barrett will come back up and he will actually start calling and 
He will start here with Asbury and we will work our way around alphabetically through the colleges. Uh, I will say, with uh, the way everybody is setting, so KCTCS system, you all have your own section because you all represent the large majority of our senior decisions. So that's KC, KCTCS, everybody raise your hand that's going to KCTCS school, uh, Madisonville, Hopkinsville, Owensboro. That whole section back there is our KCTCS section. So um, that way you all kind of see, and you'll see as everybody comes up where you all are sitting as well. But now, guys, if you all are ready back there, you can pull John up and he can there. do his part. He's up. He just he needs, needs to, to unmute. unmute and start talking. Paul, you can unmute your your uh, laptop and tell him. He's John. John. Now, Paul, mute your... Ready? Okay. Hey, everyone, this is John Bergman. I am a Southwestern T Outreach Counselor. Congratulations to you all on your post-graduation plans. Potentially, you might be going military. You might be going to college. Potentially, you're going straight into the workforce. Congratulations. Uh, sorry that I cannot be with you all today. I'm actually currently on vacation, but uh, I'm excited to be here to talk to you all potentially about your options if you have not made a decision yet. Um, I come from uh, Chicago right now, so that's where I'm at right now, but again, I'm here to talk to you all about a couple of things potentially you have not done yet. So if you are planning on graduating and you have not made that decision, it is not too late. So just give you a heads up, it is not too late to apply to college. So go ahead and fill out those college applications. You might start off at the community college. You might decide to go to a four-year public university, a four-year private university. You might decide to go for a certification or a diploma. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you are potentially going for it and getting that post-graduation plans and having a decision, you are going to be making success for yourself. So again, congratulations. Today, I do want to talk to you all about some of your options. First of all, if you have not filled out the FAFSA, please do so. The FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It's an application that students fill out and become eligible for grants, loans, scholarships, and other forms of institutional aid. And of course, potentially you might take out a student loan. So to get grant money, to get student loans, to get work study, which is working on campus, and also to get some institutional aid, you do need to fill out the FAFSA. So I strongly suggest every single year that you are in college that you fill out the FAFSA. You never know what you're going to be eligible for. And again, who should fill out the FAFSA? Every single student. You may have heard people say, well, my parents make too much money. I shouldn't fill out the FAFSA. In some circumstances, what you might notice is that some schools notice that your parents do make a lot of money, and they give you some form of type of scholarship called an endowment scholarship that helps pay for your education. So even though you might not be eligible for grant money, you might be eligible for some endowment scholarships which are donation scholarships from the university or college that you're going to. And of course, when do you fill out the FAFSA? The FAFSA opens up October 1st every single year. But again, it's not too late to fill out the FAFSA. Kentucky money and also federal money is still available for you to go to college. So if you have not filled out the FAFSA, it is a perfect time to do so. And you fill out the FAFSA at FAFSA.gov. A couple of things about the FAFSA for this year. It is required for federal, state, and most institutional aid. You apply as soon as possible starting October 1st of your senior year. You will use 2019 income. So on here you'll see the 21, 22 uh, FAFSA is 2019 income. To ensure the accuracy of your information, you will use something called the IRS retrieval tool. What happens here, it is two governmental entities, federal student aid, and also the IRS working together to actually make sure the information on your FAFSA is accurate. If you can use the IRS retrieval tool, please do so. It makes the FAFSA faster, it makes it efficient, and also it makes it accurate. So again, if you can use the IRS retrieval tool, please do so. Now, if you are starting school during the summer, you will potentially need to fill out that 2021 FAFSA, and you'll use 2018 income for that one, okay? Just to give you a heads up there if you plan on uh, starting school in the summer. You will include all the schools which you plan on applying to. So if you're applying to three to four different schools, you can add those schools to the FAFSA. 
And finally, you're going to have to have an FSA ID. You have to have one, and also your parents have to have one as well. And you make your FSA ID at fsaid.ed.gov. And just to let you know, there are several different types of financial aid. Your grants are need-based money. It's free money for you to go to college. So if you receive a grant from your universities or your colleges, that is money that does not have to be paid back. Also, and again, it's not based off your GPA or also your A's and two is all. It is based off need. So if you come from a need-based family, potentially you can use those grants. Uh, again, there is a federal Pell grant for next year. That grant has been $6,495. You're also going to have that uh, cap grant. And the cap grant for Kentucky right now is $2,900 at a public four-year, four-year private university. For the community college, it is $2,200. So let's say, for example, you decided to go to the community college and you come from an E-based family, you're going to receive potentially that $6,494 of that Pell grant. So again, that's that $6,495 of that Pell Grant if your EFC, which is Expected Family Contribution, is zero. Plus, you also receive that $2,200 at the community college. Just to give you a heads up, the community college is about $5,000 a year. Your school is paid for it. See that as an option for yourself. Also, you're going to have your scholarship, which are being merit-based or performance-based. You can receive a scholarship based off your ACT, based off your GPA, based off playing a sport or your achievements while you are in high school. You're also going to have work study. Work study is when you find a job on campus. You can use that money towards your education, or you can get that money directly back to you. You're also going to have your federal loans. Now, your loans are something you do have to pay back, and there's also an interest rate. So if you don't need to take out that loan, don't do so. Even though it seems like free money, Again, it is not, and it also has an interest rate. Right now, it's at a 2.75% interest rate for students who are potentially going to college. And it's also going to talk about the scholarship that opened up May 1st. This is called the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship. The Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship helps Kentuckians who have not yet earned an associate's degree afford an industry-recognized certification, diploma, or associates in applied science. And you must fill out the FAFSA to receive this scholarship since it is a last resort scholarship. So they take your scholarship money, they take your grant money potential if you're eligible for that, and also some institutional aid. And after that, they provide this scholarship. Just to give you a heads up, if you decide to go to the community college and you went into one of the following sectors, which are healthcare, advanced manufacturing, transportation logistics, business services, IT, and construction. Again, those five sectors are Healthcare, advanced manufacturing, transportation, logistics, business services, IT, and also construction. If you go into one of those fields and you decide to go to the community college, your tuition would be paid for. Even if your parents wanted to go to school themselves, they can receive this scholarship and have their tuition paid for as well. Now, again, you have to go into one of these five sectors and you have to make sure that the uh, college offers this program at their colleges. So for example, uh, you can go to kia.com, K-H-E-A-A.com. Again, that website is K-H-E-A-A.com. We have a full list of programs on our website. It details it from what college you can go to and what programs and degrees they offer. So please have a look at that. So if you've not made a decision yet, or you have made that decision, you're like, hey, I want my education paid for, this is a good way of doing so. Now, if you go to a four-year public or four-year private university that has a certification, a diploma, or a science in applied science, you can get some of your tuition paid for, but it won't be all of it. So at the community college, it will be for tuition, but at a four-year public, four-year private, it will only be for a proportion of that certification, the diploma, or a science in applied science. And of course, again, like I mentioned, it does open, it opened up on May 1st, and you cannot be enrolled in an ineligible degree program such as a bachelor's or an other associate's degree program at the same time at any other institution. So again, look at your options. You all have your options, which is great. Not only that, you might decide that potentially college is not the right choice for you. And you want to be able to use your keys money still, right? Because you've been earning it since your freshman year. So let's say, for example, you decide not to go to college or not. You might decide to do an apprenticeship through the Kentucky Education and Workforce Development Academy. Now, just to give you a heads up, your apprenticeship has to come from the Kentucky Education 
a workforce development cabinet. So it can't be an apprenticeship with like your uncle or potentially your dad or your mom or your grandparents. It has to come through the Kentucky Education Workforce Development Cabinet. What happens here is we reimburse you your money. So for example, let's say you find a apprenticeship and you have $2,000 worth of keys money. And again, you can always check your keys money at kia.com and logging onto your MyKia account. Now let's again say you have $2,000 worth of keys money and you have $1,800 worth of expenses. So for example, you have to buy books, you have to buy supplies, tools, potentially scrubs for your apprenticeship. If you do that, you give us the receipts and we will reimburse you that money. So again, if you had $2,000 worth of keys money and you had $1,800 worth of expenses, we would reimburse you for that $1,800. But of course, we do have to have a completed registra uh, a registered apprenticeship reimbursement pathway form to us by August 1st. And you can find that form at kia.com. Also, just to give you a heads up, we have a competition celebrating Decision Day in the state of Kentucky. The competition ends today. It's been open for about two weeks. But the thing is, I know you guys are going to be taking pictures today with uh, a couple of uh, boards that say your college potentially or potentially you have some business workforce. If you take a picture or a video and you create a post on Instagram and you use the hashtag KYDecisionDay2021. Again, if you use that hashtag, a hashtag KYDecisionDay2021 and you tag Kia Outreach and also you email us a screenshot of that photo, you have a chance to win $50 from us. And again, you're just celebrating what you plan on doing. So if you post that picture, tell us what you're doing after graduating. Also, you tag Kia Outreach and KY Decision Day 2021, the hashtag there, you have a chance to win $50 from the state of Kentucky. Now, just to give you a heads up, we only so far have only had seven people do this in the state of Kentucky. So if you are able to post a picture today of your event, uh, and picture a picture of you all telling us what you plan on doing, and you follow these guidelines, you have a chance to win $50. So just give your heads up. Again, only seven people have turned this in so far. So take that chance. Let us know what you're planning on doing after graduating. And of course, if you need help, if you need help with anything, you can always contact us. So if you would text OUTREACH to 1-800-928-8926, again, if you text OUTREACH, to 1-800-928-8926, you can receive some timely resources and reminders about preparing for college. Not only that, you can always contact me. Um, my name is John Bergman again. I am the Southwestern Key Outreach Counselor, and I know you guys have seen me the past couple of years. But the thing is, I am here for you all. So if you need help with the FAFSA, contact me. You go to the Kia website, you can always find my information there. You can call me, you can email me, you can also text me, and I will be here to help you all out. Also, you can follow Kia on our social media. If you follow Kia on Facebook, it's just Kia. So facebook.com slash Kia. We have a Twitter account, it is at Kia. And we have an Instagram account, and that's Kia Outreach. And then of course, we have a YouTube channel, and we also have a Snapchat. But I wanna thank you all for letting me come out today to talk to you all about potentially your decisions. Congratulations, class of 2021. You're gonna do great things for your futures. See ya. That was uh, very encouraging. You know, we've probably heard that a couple of times, but probably somebody needed a good reminder. You know, that FAFSA information is very important to all, and it sticks with you uh, when you've heard it two or three times. So thank you so much for that. Yes, sir, information. Up there. And please uh, don't hesitate, students, to reach out to Mr. Bergman. He is, right okay. has been very helpful. You've seen him around. You know how helpful he can be, so he will do whatever you can to help you. I've got a question though. You all know this, but I don't. I really don't. What is TYY? What's TYY? It's 800-855-2880. That's a TYY. What is TYY? Does anybody know? I don't know. That's funny. I just thought I'd ask. Put you on the spot. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Burke. Let's give him another one. Okay, very good. See you, John. All right. Uh, take just a couple of minutes here before we get this show on the road. And I want to take just a minute to tell you my personal story. And the reason I want to do that is because uh, uh, we have, we all have, is this thing on?
Yeah. Check, check. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. I won't take long, but, but I have to take a minute. You are my seniors, okay? I've been with you a few years. And you are my seniors, and I'm proud of you. And I don't get this opportunity very often to just sit down and talk to you. So I'm going to take just a minute to tell you a little story. It's a true story. It's about me. And you all will write your own story, okay, each one of you. Uh, when I graduated high school, I had no intention of going to college. So some of you are in that shoe, in those shoes right now. You're going to take a gap year. Well, when I took my gap year, um, I was working at the Chevrolet Garage over here, uh, Tishner Chevrolet. I don't know if you know who that is or what that is, but that was a Chevrolet dealership. I was a technician there, and the owner told me, he said, Paul, he said, you've got some great talent in working on cars, but I want you to go to college and get some theory. I want you to understand how the systems on the automobile work. I want you to know why it breaks down and where the problems are. So I said, you know, his name is Wayne Verbal. And Wayne told I told Wayne, I said, you know, I appreciate your uh, confidence in me. I said, but I'm not sure I'm cut out for college. He said, well, let me tell you what college is. College is high school extended, and you apply yourself and you learn how to live your life. Well, I, I was a little nervous. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. But he, he taught me into it. In fact, Wayne Verbal was a nice guy. He bought me my first set of tools to use as a technician. How about that? Well, for a little farm boy out of Center County, Kentucky, that was a big deal, okay? I'll just tell you that. So, encouraged by a man who had uh, made his way in life and was doing well, encouraged me to go to college. He said, you're gonna go, if, if you'll follow my instructions, he said, you're gonna go down to Southern Illinois University. You're gonna enroll in the uh, ASEP program, and that was a, a program for uh, young guys, to young guys and gals to uh, enter to be a technician. It was with General Motors. They, they designed the program, and uh, they talked just things about GM. They didn't talk about Dodge. They didn't talk about Ford. Sorry, guys. I, you know, I just don't know much about Ford and Dodge. But. Nevertheless, uh, I signed up, went and did all my testing, and, and, and got down there and was enrolled. And uh, when I was enrolled, they told me, you'll report to the college on this day. And at that time, they were doing some college tours and things like that, but it wasn't popular. Or at least it wasn't in my book. So I went down there the weekend before. I already knew where I was going to be staying. I was going to be staying in Wright 3 on the, on the main campus at Southern Illinois University where there was 20,000 students. 20,000 students! I'm thinking, oh my gosh! 20,000 students. And they were all there. But the Sunday before I was going to go and take my first class, I walked, took my schedule, and I walked around campus, and I thought, okay, how am I going to deal with this? Because there's some big buildings, and they're a long way away, and they're not just down the hall like I'm used to in high school. So I got out there in front of my, my English uh, building, for lack of a better word, uh, and, and I sat down. And on top of that steeple on, at the, in the, on top of the building, there was a big clock. And I was sitting there, and I was looking at the front door, and there were sidewalks all over the place, and there were several people walking on a Sunday afternoon. And I sat down there and I thought, okay, live or die, I'm going to do this. So I started my first class on Monday morning and started in the, into, the, into the role, and, and I was, I'm just going to be honest here, I'm being transparent. When I was your age, I was probably not the easiest guy to get out of bed in the morning. And I thought, I'm going to miss my 8 o'clock class. <laughs> I know I'm going to miss my 8 o'clock class. But I'll have you know, I was so nervous, I couldn't hardly sleep that night. And when that alarm clock went off the next morning, I woke up and I was in a panic already. But I got to go into classes and, and got into a routine and things were really good. And uh, so I'm, I'm telling you this story just to tell you that if I can do this, you can do this. And if I hadn't have gone to college, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet you guys. So it opens doors. And remember, when you're in college, there's going to be days that you are not going to want to do. You're not going to want to do certain days. Final exams. The first time you get up in front of a class and present your material that you have prepared, you've worked for three or four weeks on, a month and a half, and you've got it prepared, you're going to stand in front of your class and you're going to present. It's not going to be easy. Some of you have already done that in high, in high school with your English 101 class, and I'm proud of you for taking that initiative. 
You have done things that a lot of high school students will not. But just remember this. This is not the last day of high school, but it's soon to be your last day to walk through the high school as a student of Millburg County High School. Enjoy these last days. Enjoy this day as you sign your certificate and be proud that you're going to go to college. It is an awesome event. Okay, that's enough time for that. So now, moving on to the next thing. I just wanted to share that with you. Because one day, you're going to be able to tell a story much, well, it won't be similar. It'll be like that, but it won't be like that. Does that make sense? Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to uh, call you up, and I would like for you to stand. I'm going to call you by row, and you're going to stand over here on the side, and you're going to walk up, and you're going to hand me your card, and I'm going to call your name and information. And you're going to sit down and sign, and then we would like for you to go back to your seat and watch the rest of your classmates do the same. So, at this time... Have you got me back up and running? Yes, thank you, TJ. Good job. I love a good sound, man. You can always count on So first row, please stand up. We have uh, a great group of people here coming up to the stage right now. I would like for Eli Rose, if you could make your way to the front of the line. I hope you got your hair fixed today, so everybody, so you can have a good picture. It's not a bad hair day, is it? It's not a bad hair day. Okay.
Bellarmine University. We have Ms. Sophie Fields. She will be attending uh, Bellarmine University and she plans to, to study environmental studies. Bellarmine <laughs> University. Stetson Childress will be attending Bethlehem University. He's going to be studying business administration. He plans to do a little running while he's there. I hope it's not for the law. Running cross country and track at Bethlehem University. Ms. Erica Bennett is going to be attending Gresham University. She's going to be studying uh, uh, communication sciences and disorders. She has a tennis scholarship and an Erskine scholarship. Congratulations, Erica Bennett. Uh, Ms. Alexandra Barnes will be attending Gresham University. She'll be studying business management and will be attending on a volleyball scholarship. She's going to be uh, playing a little volleyball. Ms. Grace Benson will be attending Congressional University and will be studying child psychology. <laughs> Ms. Madeline Milburn will be attending Cedarville University. She will be studying communications and Christian ministry. Ada McIntosh will be attending Eastern Kentucky University, will be studying computer information systems, uh, possibly Air Force after college, and possibly going to a, a trade school after college to learn the trade. <laughs> Mr. Zach Harden is going to be attending Kentucky Wesleyan. He'll be studying accounting, and he's going to be doing a little running too on the track team. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Landon Harper will be attending Kentucky Wesley. He is going into the pre-pharmacy program and uh, he's going to be running a little bit also on the track and cross country teams. Mr. Isaac Rose will be attending Wester, uh, excuse me, Kentucky Wesleyan College. He will be uh, uh, studying accounting, and I couldn't get this. I wanted to say this first because it's alphabetically next is baseball. Mr. Isaac Rose. Okay, next we have Miss Emma Mallory. She's going to be attending Lindsey Wilson College, and she's going to be studying psychology. Miss Emma Mallory. Mr. Connor Oates will be attending Murray State University and he will be uh, studying the pre-dental biology program. <laughs> Mr. Cole Johnson will also be attending Murray State University. He will be studying architectural design and construction management. Congratulations, Cole. Mr. Zachary James will also be attending Murray State University. He's going to have a double major in, electric, in electrical and mechanical engineering. Congratulations. <laughs> Ms. Alexis Mathis will be attending Murray State University and she's going to be studying nursing. I don't know if I want her to give me a shot or not. Mr. Nick Bautista will be uh, attending Murray State University, and he will be in the Vet Tech program. Take care of your Okay, 
Ms. Grayson Gregory is going to be attending Murray State University in a major of pre-vet. Other plans after graduating Murray, Murray will be attending vet school to earn my doctorate in veterinary medicine. Congratulations, Grayson. Ms. Caitlin Devine will also be attending Murray State University and will be studying nursing. She will finish a pediatric program after nursing after her nursing school. <laughs> Ms. Emma Phelps will be attending Murray State University. Uh, she will be studying, uh, she will have a major in child psychology. Mr. Colton Dietrich will be attending Murray State University. He is going to be studying computer science. Ms. Sophia Drake will be attending Murray State University and she will be studying music therapy. That sounds like Haley Bates. She's going to be attending Murray State University in secondary education and history. <laughs> Miss Addie Dennis is going to attend Murray State University. And she's not sure what she's going to be studying, but you bet she'll be good at it. No swimming for Addie. Austin Randolph will be attending Murray State University and will be studying Agner Business. He's going to put the food on the table. Ms. McKenzie Sutherland will also be attending Murray State University and will be studying Environmental Science. Ms. Lexi Miller, she will be attending Murray State University. And her major will be Agri Science Technology with an emphasis in communications. <laughs> Mr. Brandon Caldio is going to also attend Murray State University in Ag Business. Ms. Brooklyn Cott will be attending Mer uh, not Mary State, the University of Kentucky in Honors College, and she will be studying biology and pre-medicine. Congratulations, Brooklyn. <laughs> Ms. Addison Johnson will be attending the University of Kentucky. She will major in human health sciences, pre-dentistry, and her minor is going to be photography. <laughs> Addison, we could have used you this morning making some pictures for us. Okay, we have Chloe Lynn. She is going to be attending the University of Louisville and will be in the nursing program. Okay, I got a book here. <clears throat> Miss Destiny Sykes Seaver. I plan to finish my associate at Madisonville and eventually attend and graduate from Western Kentucky University. Other plans, take classes this summer at Madisonville Community and Technical College. I plan to major in social work and I might uh, learn some design or journalism as well. So congratulations, Ms. Destiny. Good plans. Mr. Ethan Dukes will be attending Western Kentucky University. He plans to major in political science. The next president. Oh, she is so much the next president. Miss Anaya Ray, I plan to attend Western Kentucky University. I, uh, oh my gosh, did I miss? See, I knew I was going to do that. I was just waiting for you to call me out on it. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. My bad. 
And she is also going to be majoring in political science, and she's going to be a lawyer. If you need, if you need service, call services, come sit in the night. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, Will Burks is our next victim. He's going to be attending Western Kentucky University and will be studying mechanical engineering. Go Will. Miss Jolie Campbell will be attending the Honors College at WKG. She will have a double major in Spanish and math. Concentration will be in free medical. Miss Kylie Calso, Western Kentucky University, she plans to major in speech disorders and minor in theater, and she wants to teach uh, guidance counselors how to pronounce names. No, I'm teaching that was just a joke. <laughs> Congratulations, Kylie. Okay, we have uh, Miss Maxwell Daisy Dukes will be attending Western Kentucky University. She plans to study biology and pre dentistry. Very good. Ms. Dia Johar. Johar, I got it right. I thought I did. Western Kentucky University, and she will be studying child services. You know, believe it or not, calling out these names are not the easiest thing. <laughs> I don't know how this bunch does it. <laughs> okay, Ms. Marley Sutton. Yeah! Yeah. Let's go! Western Kentucky University, and she plans to major in criminology. And uh, that's what she's going to be doing, criminology. So you go, girl, let's go! Okay, we have Mr. Yeah. Do Mr. Dakota Dukes. There you go! And military leadership. And he will be going to the military. Yes, Mr. he will. Dukes. He will be going into the Army. <laughs> Miss Allison Franklin will be yeah. attending Western Kentucky yeah. University. She will be studying forensic psychology. Mr. James Sauterly will be attending Transylvania University, studying political science, and he's going to play a little golf. Can you believe that? Thank you, James. Savannah Grove will be attending the University of Alabama with a major in biology and pre medicine. After college, attend med school to be uh, a team physician with the NBA and, uh, or NCAA. Wow, how about that? She's got some good plans there. Mr. Charles Gray, our U.S. Air Force Academy, will be studying engineering. It will be going into the Air Force. Upon graduation from the Air Force Academy, I will receive a bachelor's degree and a commission and, 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 a, way, and a commission as an officer into the U.S. Air Force. I plan to become a pilot. Way to go. Mr. Dalton Garrett. Yeah. He will be in the of the U.S. Air Force as well, and he wants to be a state trooper, a Kentucky state trooper. <laughs> Brian Hedden is also going into the Air Force, and he's going to go into the flight school. Uh, he plans to be a commercial pilot. <laughs> Mr. Hayden Carver Gregory attend, will be attending Hopkinsville Community College and will be studying agribusiness. Very good. <laughs> Mr. Tanner Steele is going to be going to Owensboro Community and Technical College. He will be studying maintenance and electrical. Uh, he wants to work at Food Giant or Dollar Store and he will be uh, looking at going into the military. Congratulations, man. <laughs> Mr. Ethan Epley will be attending South Central Kentucky Community and Technical College in the program of culinary. He plans to find a job somewhere cooking. So you're ready to eat, baby. Always ready to eat. Cole Cody will be attending Madisonville Community College and will be studying industrial maintenance.
Mr. Logan Tinsley will be attending Madisonville Community College and began, began plans to become an electrician. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan Tyler Carver is going to be going to Madisonville Community College and studying industrial maintenance. Mr. Cameron Simmons is going to be going to Madisonville Community College studying automotive mechanics and he wants to build a home That's awesome. Congratulations. Cameron. Good job. Mr. Shelton Browning will be attending Madisonville Community College in general education and plans to transfer to a different college after MCC. Ms. Elizabeth Rackett will also be attending Madison Community College studying business administration systems. Ms. Ashley Drennan will also be attending Madison Oak Community College studying business management. <laughs> Ms. Emily Darby will also be attending Madison Oak Community College. She will be studying speech language pathology and transfer to a university to complete the speech program. Next we have Ms. Maddie Vincent. She'll be attending Madison Community College and Murray State University. She'll be studying elementary and special education. Okay, uh, Miss, uh, yes, we're ready. Miss Lauren Howell is going to be attending Madison Community College. She'll be studying in health science technology and will transfer to UK after receiving her associate degree. Ms. Lily Davis will be attending Massville Community College and will be studying accounting as her major. <laughs> Mr. Mason Rowe will be attending Massville Community College and he'll be studying computerized manufacturing and machining. <laughs> Seth McKee is going to be attending Massville Community College and will be trying to work a part time job or out of body supply. Building tank. All right, I'd like to see that. Mr. Smith. Okay, good job. Braxton Piper will be attending Madison Community College in the alignment program. That is a new program, by the way, at Madison Community College. It's about three or four years old. We're doing a good job there. Mr. Cody Ridge will be attending Madison Community College in the alignment program also, and he wants to work with Warner Construction. Mr. Canyon Culberson will be attending Masco Community College in the Lineman Program. He's currently working at Bravo Fences and Century Police. <laughs> Ethan DeArmond will be attending Masco Community College and will be studying business or business management. <laughs> Ms. Haley Boren will be attending Masco Community College. She wants to be a surgical. Will be in the surgical technology program. <laughs> Ms. Shelby Hudson will be attending Massimoe Community College. She's going to major in elementary and special education and minor in theater. <laughs> All right, Ms. Sarah Nofsinger will be attending Massimo Community College and will be studying science for her associate degree. <laughs> Ms. Alex Grundy will be attending Massimo Community College for the Associate of Arts in Psychology, will transfer to WKU to obtain her Bachelor's in Psychology and minor in Child Development. Very good. <laughs> Ms. Emma Sampson. She will be attending Massimo Community College for an Associates in Science. 
plans to transfer to the University of Louisville to study nursing. Congratulations, Mr. Jordan McElwain will be attending Massville Community College. She's going to study health science and technologies. She will attend Western for the last two years and become an author. Mr. Justin McKinney will be attending Massimo Community College. He will be in the video and gaming design major. And uh, looking forward to some of those games. <laughs> Mr. Andrew Jackson McElwain will be attending Massimo Community College. He will be studying, uh, uh oh, endangered species biology? Cool. And transfer to Western. After MCC. <laughs> Bertie Lambert will be attending uh, Masco Community College and will be studying secondary education. <laughs> Ms. Catherine Smith will be attending Masco Community College uh, in a year. She will be studying English theater and uh, will be continuing working at Walmart. I plan on volunteering with our community for H and theater events as well, and continuing in all Newburgh County Fair Board. Stay open. Joshua Soak is going into the Army. He will be in the entry, in, infantry, I just didn't get that F out there. Infantry active duty, uh, ships out July 5th. Thank you for your service, Joshua. Trenton Howard is planning to go into the Navy. He will, he will ship out on September the 28th, and uh, he's going to be a nuclear mechanic. How about that? He has a 30, listen, listen to that. He has a $38,000 sign-on bonus. How about that for the nuclear program? Outstanding. Noah Rickard is going to go into the Navy Reserves. Um, Maybe going, to, maybe going to college for a medical degree. How about that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Ms. Lily Smith is going to uh, go to South Central Kentucky in the radiology program and become a radiological technologist. I hope I said that right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Landon Gonzalez, is, uh, he's going to take a gap here and uh, stay local and work at Dairy Queen, so be sure to stop by and get your ice cream. Yeah. 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 the undecided group, but I'd like for each of you that are undecided to stand at this time, please, and be recognized. You know, you're in a, you're in a transition year, and we're going we're gonna to encourage you to, uh, to do whatever your heart desires, and we're here to support you. If you need your thank you very much. Yeah. All right. And now for the moment you've all waited for. We're going to bring to the stage one of the finest men in education in Millburg County. Wait. He worked with the elementary school, and now he is our Millburg County Superintendent. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Robbie Davis. Decided. I was 28 before I started college. Worked at an explosives plant. So I've done other things. I get that. I get what it's like being a little nervous going to college. And I know all of you are. You're going to a new campus. And you're like, you may say, oh no, it's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. But it's a little scary. 
But I want you to think back how you felt the first day you went to sixth grade. You remember that? I was a middle school principal. I remember. I want you to think back how you felt the first time you went to East Campus, ninth grade. And look back, you made it fine. And everything worked out. So when you start college, you get a little uptight, and you're going to, it's fine. Everybody else feels the same way. I want you to know how proud I am of you. I hated the way the last year went. Year and a half for most of you guys. That's not the way you want to end your career in high school. We tried to do the best we can with it, but it, it just wasn't what it ought to be. And I apologize for that. It bothered me every day. What can we do better, especially for our seniors? Some things we did pretty well, and some things I wish we'd done better. So the one thing you can take from this that I encourage you to think about, when you try to get a job somewhere, one day, you're all going to do it. Some of you may say, well, I'm going to work for Dad. Dad doesn't care. Most of them do. You got a lesson in resilience, and I didn't want you to have it. I didn't want you to have it in 12th grade. But when you go to an employer, if I'm talking to somebody, I've hired a lot of people over the years, one of the best things that they can have is the ability to overcome stuff. Because I don't care how much money you have, I don't care how talented you are, how smart you are, how good your family is, there's going to come times, I promise you, over the next several years, life's just going to kick your butt a little bit. And you've got to be able to overcome that. And you've done that this year. So when you do interview, when you talk with people, talk about your senior year. Talk about how tough it was, but you did overcome it. You did still graduate. It wasn't what you wanted it to be, but you made the best of it. And another thing, no matter what you're doing, the sports, if you're a lineman, and you, there's going to be somebody that may be able to climb a little high. If you're in sports, maybe somebody a little taller. If you're smart, there may be somebody a little smarter. What's going to make the difference, guys, and you keep hearing me say this, is your soft skills. I hire people. I know what I'm looking for. I've got a lot of really smart people in, and not always the smartest one with the highest GPA got the job. Think about this now. Can you communicate? Some of you, that's harder. You're shy. But you can practice that and you can get better at it. Look at somebody out. That does kind of matter. When you shake a good firm handshake, it does kind of matter. Is there drama everywhere you've been? Are you always into it with somebody? That's going to hurt you. Those soft skills, the ability to work with other people, positive attitude. You think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you guys, these things is what's going to separate you from other folks when you try to get whatever it is you want to be. And that's true. I had one son who works at Logan Aluminum, and all these things played in in the hiring process with him. I have one son who's training to be an MMA fighter in Portland, Oregon. And all this stuff matters as far as getting trading partners and coaches and all that. The soft skill stuff is important. So I encourage you to think about those things, you know, going forward. One other thing, one other hint. Employers look at your social media. Kind of be careful what you put on there. They look back. They, you've all done some dumb things on there. Probably all have. Well, I don't because I don't have Facebook. As a superintendent, you don't want Facebook. Just, just a hint right there if you ever become a superintendent. But just kind of be smart about what you do. Think down the road just a little bit. I'm excited for you. I am so proud of you. And I just want to encourage you. I don't care where you come from, what your situation has been, some of you have some tough home lives. You've overcome a lot of stuff already. You can be whatever you want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. I've seen it. My friends did it. I kind of did it. Like I said, I worked at this explosive plant. No idea. No chance going to college. I was the first one in, in my family. And it just kind of backed into it. My wife was a teacher. She said, I'm tired of you being grouchy, working third shift. Let's try to figure something else out. And so she finally talked me into it, and, and, and I don't know, here I am. Never thought I'd be superintendent, that's for sure. But I'm proud of you guys. I want to encourage you guys. You all can do great things. You can. Don't sit there and think, I can't, because if you can. All right, took more time than I wanted. Put the superintendent hat back on. Thanks for listening to my little speech, little sermon. Appreciate you guys. And again, I'm so proud of you guys, and I apologize, but we fell short this year under COVID, giving you what you truly need. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.